So Susanna, who is other science teacher and myself, we, I mean, we discussed it and we're like, we have to find a way to get these students to buy in. We have to find a way to get them excited about alternative energy because we don't see a lot of that being used in the city. So it's not something that we thought was relevant to them. We gave them their, an outline of what their carbon footprint was. It was a worksheet that they had to take home and fill in to see how much energy they were using, where they were using the most energy and stuff like that. Then they brought it back and we um, calculated their carbon footprint and there was a section on it that asked them to identify or make some calculations to decide how many Earths it would take to actually support them if they continue to live that way. And we had kids who were having 10, 9 Earths, 15, so they were like totally shocked and surprised, so we took it from there. So we discussed with them that this is what your carbon footprint is, and this is how it actually well impacts the earth or impacts the world that we live in. So we studied global warming, we talked about that, we talked about the issues with global warming, we discussed and talked about the fact that some people believe it's happening, some people don't believe it. So they had the option of reading the information, doing some research, and taking their own stance, and most of the kids, well, about all of the kids decided that this was something that was relevant. And even if global warming was not going to happen tomorrow and the earth wasn't going to end, then they could still do something because this is what their carbon footprint was and that must be doing something to affect the earth. So once they realized that we um, talked to them about some of the options that we have in terms of alternative energies and what these are, we talked about the history of alternative energies and the fact that we've been using this for centuries, but we're not harnessing these energies like we should to make the impact that we can. So we introduced them to wind energy, solar energy, and um, geothermal. geothermal, hydropower, all of them. And we, surprisingly enough, they realized that they, um, solar energy was being used in Baltimore City. They had pictures that they had taken and they came in to say there were solar energy trash cans around and uh, some of the street lights like down at the McDonald's down the road. So we're like, great. And they're like, so if it's here, why can't we use that in our school? So we had an expert who I think it was Keith Madigan who came in to talk to them about what these energies were. And we had done, he had done an audit for the school, so he spoke to them about what the audit was, what he did, and he said, he explained to them that, because they live in an urban area, it would be best if we consider solar energy as opposed to wind energy, because we don't have the wind speed that we need, and hydro, we don't have, well, streams and whatever <laughs> close enough that would turn for us to make the energy that we needed. So solar would have been the best alternative. So the kids, I mean, they really bought into that. They really thought about that. They had taken notes and they're like, so what can we do? So they thought about solar panels, solar tubes. They did some research. They found all these alternatives. And it just came to be that they were like, solar tubes it is. So we had research about natural light, the benefits of natural light. And they realize that, well, solar panels, as opposed to spirals, as opposed to solar tube, it doesn't do the same thing because the solar tubes have the diffuser, so you get the spread of natural light. It's less expensive. And then we looked at the audit that um, Keith had done, and they realized that, oh, we can discuss this because it's going to help us save money. And then there are all these great benefits. So they decided, let's get solar tubes because we are getting a new roof, so it would be awesome if we got solar tubes. So they decided, what can we do? We really want to do something, what can we do? So we were like, well, there is a new roof in plan, so we can advocate to get what we want, but you need to understand that we might get it, we might not get it. And that did not deter them at all. They were like, yep, we're ready, let's go. So they started doing some more research. They looked at solar tubes, they looked at solar panels, they looked at skylights, they compared, they contrasted, they did research about the benefits of natural light and all that stuff, and they started working on their proposals.